Hi, it's April from the Noble Garden. And today is May 19, 2023. And this is my third garden tour of this season. And I am going to show you around the whole garden, including the summer crops that are just babies. And in case you guys haven't watched any of my garden tours before, I am located in the Western Piedmont area of North Carolina zone 7B. And we have a pretty good long growing season. This spring has been a little bit cooler and then sudden warm temperatures. So the garden in some areas is struggling because of the irregular temperature changes. So these are my onions that I started back in March and they're starting to yellow, which is fine. Um, I think they're probably getting close to being mature. They're looking really good, bulbing up pretty decent. And then this is my garlic and it is also starting to die back, which is fine because I have dug down around it and noticed that it does have quite a bit of a big head. This right here is a volunteer watermelon that I have decided to leave in its place. I am leaving that watermelon there because this is actually my future watermelon patch anyways. So as soon as this garlic was up, I would have put in a watermelon seed. So might as well let one go ahead and do its thing. So this is my kale, oregano. This is my first succession that I put in back in the end of January. Um, you can actually see quite a bit of cauliflower heads forming in here. There's one there. Let's see. I saw a lot yesterday. These are behind because they went through a cold snap. This is my broccoli. We have harvested some of its heads. Um, it is going to seed in some spots, but I do have like little baby heads right here that I can harvest and use as like just little small heads. You can also eat broccoli leaves, which is actually something that I am going to start doing. It tastes really good. Our cabbages, we have several cabbages heads that need to be harvested today. Looking good. We actually had cabbage for dinner last night. And let me tell you, yum, yum, yum. So this is what our broccoli looks like when it's gone to seed. All these little flowers were originally the heads. Like the little green things you see. These all turn these little flowers. And these flowers are actually edible. I leave this in for a little bit. Um, mainly because I want to eat the leaves off of it. The bees love it. My children love the flowers. But this will be coming out soon because I need this space for more crops. There's you a decent broccoli head that hasn't gone to flower. More cabbage. This is my red cabbage. Um, I'm actually seeing heads in there now. I didn't know what it was or wasn't going to do, but actually I see heads growing in there. This side has bunch of onions, some radishes. We put cucumber plants in here, the remaining of the carrots. This is catnip. I have a cat. He's in love with that stuff. Um, we're starting to get into more of the second succession that I put in. And it's full of broccoli. Uh, broccoli that's going to seed. Just got too hot for broccoli around here and some of the plants just cannot handle it. more cabbages. This is all the stuff that died back that I thought was going to die um, that turned it around and came back. More oregano, more onion. These onions aren't as impressive as the ones down there. This is my seed tape. I'm pretty sure those carrots are not done. However, that is um, black seed that Simpson is coming out today for the farmer's market tomorrow. Um, there's mixed lettuces on the back of it. All This whole thing other than the carrots are coming out today for the market tomorrow. This is an empty bat. I need to come and fix up and replant with summer stuff. We're getting into more of my cauliflowers. Then the broccolis from what I bought. Actually, a lot of those are ones I've already cut the heads off and they're just doing miniature heads. And then these are heads that are pretty much going to seed, not doing too good. More cauliflower. You'll notice my cauliflower is turning purple. That's from where I haven't covered it from the sun. And it's actually getting, um, I have to write this word down for you. And it's getting antioxidants, but it's another word. 
It's not going to harm it. I can still eat it. I really need to come outside and cover it up. This right here is another batch of kale with some Swiss chard on the back of it. Another catnip. My overwintered onions, and I have harvested some and eaten. There's a pretty good decent head right there that I'm probably going to harvest next because I'm going to need it for dinner tonight. My asparagus bed. So this bed is full of kohlrabi, which I haven't noticed it forming its head quite yet. Um, and then radishes, which we have been picking. This bed has my last succession of remains, along with a lot of radishes. So a lot of these are actually going to come out today for the market tomorrow. And then this is going to be turned into like a flower and herb bed after all this is out. This bed is coming out today, but it's the freckled green and red romaine. This is more kohlrabi. And this corner is more of my radishes. This is my broccoli, my third succession. And I have noticed it Fulman heads. I just don't know with the temperature if it's going to do okay. This is uh, my third succession of cabbage, which of course you can see it's a little bit behind compared to the rest, which is okay. This right here is a volunteer sunflower. More catnip. And then on this side that we're about to hit up is the cabbage that I bought. It's actually looking pretty good and should be ready to harvest next week. So, if you've been following me on my gardener series where I'm showing beginner gardeners and sharing a bed with them, this is the bed that we're sharing. It actually is one of my best beds. Looks the best. I have to harvest this lettuce. I know I told you guys I would last week. I kind of forgot about it, but it has what we call dino kale. Um, basil, peppers, green beans, two tomato plants, and my only squash plant that looks the best I really, really need to come in and put a zucchini seed in because it didn't pop up. And then in the back is some um, cucumbers that will do better once I get some of this lettuce out. So on this side, more radishes. You're going to see peas in the back as we go by. And um, there's probably plenty of peas to harvest today, it looks like. We have been snacking on them all week. Look how beautiful. The kale that I bought from a nursery these are my cauliflower um, one half of it is the normal white cauliflower and the other half in the top is my purple and actually on purpose purple um and i haven't seen any heads in these but these were the last ones i planted so it's probably gonna take some time anyways and you'll also notice on the edge there are some radishes so this right here is swiss chard this is spinach Swiss chard. Some more lettuce heads. This is slow boat lettuce, which I'm banking on for next week. So hopefully it really is slow boat. Here's your better view of the peas in the back row. Looking lovely and full. Me and my little bit will have to come harvest this. All right, guys, this is the other side, the new addition, and I'm going to show you it. There is some issues in it, but we will talk about it when we go through. These are my potato beds. They're actually doing very, very good. They are doing the best. So on this back of this bed is um, okra. I am not concerned about okra. It's a very slow grower. The hotter it gets, the better it will look. It looks good. And then we have corn which I'm actually very happy about how much corn came up. I'm going to grow another succession of corn. But that's what the rest of this bed on this side is. So now we're going to run into the problems. This outer bed is watermelon. It's the smaller portional size watermelon. You're going to see some yellow sticky tags, and I will tell you what that's all about. As you can tell down this aisle, most things are not doing good. Most of it likes heat, and I don't think at the beginning it was hot enough for it, so that was the problem. This is supposed to be Kanjari melon, and I do have a few that have popped up. This other side 
is supposed to be Minnesota Midget, which the only one I have is this one on this side. And then nothing here. And then a few here. I've got to come reseed this area. This is the salt and pepper cucumber, which actually does have babies that have popped up. And then this side of it has nothing. Now we're getting into cucumbers that are not what they're supposed to be. They're bigger. And there's a reason for it. I will tell you more about it after I get to tell you what's going on on the other side. These are my noodle beans. I have red on this side, green on that side. So, lots and lots of yellow sticky tags. And lots and lots of very ugly plants. So, this is my second time planting squash here. And I'm probably going to take out this whole bed and replant. Because I have been dealing with cucumber beetles and squash bugs already. The main problem is the cucumber beetles they have been out of control you'll notice when we go down here some of the squash plants look better than others we have treated it with organic but we're still having problems i'm determined to be an organic grower so i will only use organic solutions and that makes me that makes my job a little bit harder because I only have so many options and so we have been using three different options and I think this last one might help and then the sticky pads are not my favorite thing to use because last year they did catch some things I wouldn't have wanted to catch but I had them sitting up fanning around kind of thing so I'm making thinking maybe if I lay them on the ground where the cucumber beetles are that maybe that would help I'll come back this afternoon and kind of look and see um, and make my decision because I did it this morning on whether or not I want to keep them there this side here is my green beans, which are doing amazing. They are ahead of last year, which makes me very excited. This are my peppers. They look really good. We're going to try and trellis them a little different than last year. We did run out of room, so there's a few over here that don't have anything to hang on to, so that is to be determined. Now we're going to start getting into my tomatoes. These are my cherry tomatoes. They look really good this year. I do need to come probably and start pinning them to the fence. I can't wait to show you guys as they get bigger, taller, and loaded with tomatoes. So, problem row number three. This is my zucchini aisle. And it's having, honestly, not as much trouble, but there are a few. So, it has its sticky pads, too. Nothing much to show here. Now, guys, these tomatoes are babies and just getting going. So, I'm just going to show you like this. And as they start to develop more. We will start going down tomato alleys, as I call them. The last thing I will quickly show you are my sweet potatoes. They were put in last week. So they're still on the smaller side. And to be determined how they're going to do or not do. But here you have it. All right, guys. That was my full garden tour. You finally got to see everything I'm working on. Each week's going to be different. I have some seeds to add this week. I have some plants to add this week. We had a very busy week ahead of me, but I thank you guys for watching and I can't wait to show you next week's progress.